Okay, when I say we should get a part two for Chicago, I didn't mean we should get an encore performance, meaning we want to know rain. Well, Mother Nature said it was good last year, so we brought it back this year. Yo, what's up, everyone? My name is Jet. Welcome back to episode of MDK Racing Victory Stop, recapping the second ever NASCAR Cup Street Street Race here in the streets of Chicago. And just like last year, had a lot of rain, had a lot of controversy, and a surprise winner. This race started out actually very fun. It was, we knew that rain was coming, but for the most part, um, it was pretty damp. It should say rain had arrived, but it was pretty damp. NASCAR gave the drivers options of whether to go for slicks or for wets, which was very interesting to see. And we saw some exciting racing, especially up front. SVG, you knew that starting fifth, we knew he was going to be a driver that drivers would be watching out for. Started fifth place, but drove his way up to the front and won stage one. In that stage, you saw drivers slipping, you know, a lot of comers and goers. Some drivers that elected to go on wets that started mid-pack, drove the way up to the top 10 Montrex. You knew who started 24th and move up to 10th. So there was a lot of exciting racing that was going back and forth, back and forth. And you already saw some early contenders like SVG, like Kyle Larson, and Ty Gibbs, who led the first part of the race before SVG took over. However, that is when things started going to chaos because again, rain was coming. You compile that with the fact that NASCAR started this race at 4.30 in the afternoon. Granted, it's not mostly them. It's part the networks, part also because NBC had IndyCar as a lead in from Mid Ohio and with the concerts. But still, there needs to be a much better solution with having the races put on so late. Because even though, yes, you do have the chance of higher ratings, you also run the risk of having less amount of daylight. And once stage one ended, Akasha came out with Core the Joy, which had that race end under yellow for stage one. NASCAR immediately said, hey, by the way, we can't get the full race in. Darkness sets in at 8.20 their time or 9.20 our time in, in Eastern time. So you knew that this race more than likely could go into a timed race. What then blew my mind, for some odd reason then, NASCAR decided to have us go under yellow for 30 minutes. A one car spin for LaJoy, I think in turn five, turn four, turn five. But then we were under yellow for 30 minutes with going under caution for the stage win and all this stuff. Absolutely unacceptable for the caution to be that long. And again, another reason as to why, okay, if the race is going to start late, stop doing things that would make it run later. That being stage cautions. That's another issue that I have with this, with this race was that in my eyes, it could have been handled a lot quicker with, you know, yes, move up the race time. You could, you know, maybe do a little asterisk to that because a lot of things go into that. But there is no need to have stage cautions. We got rid of them last year. It was better when they were gone last year. But there's no need to involve them this year. Uh, there's no need to continue having stage cautions. And this race proved it. Because going for 30 minutes under yellow just continued pushing this race. Making it longer and longer and longer. So much so that I think NASCAR realized, hey, rain is coming. Like a big sell was coming. Forced NASCAR, I think, to really restart the race under wet like almost pouring conditions right away you saw multiple cl crashes on lap 25 on the restart uh Bubba Wallace he got dumped off the nose of Alex Bowman after Alex Bowman said he just missed the corner Bubba goes sideways get, uh, get collects Daniel Suarez and they go off to the side of the track and then later on Chase Briscoe runs to the back end of Shane Van Gisbergen in turn six Briscoe spins but he just clips Shane Van Gisbergen setting Gisbergen hard into the outside wall, taking him out of the race. Meaning that the favorite to win this race, Shane Van Gisbergen, was taken out before the end of stage two even was done, around lap 25, lap 26. Now, Briscoe, I mean, he was just holding up for dear life. He was just a passenger. Got on the brakes, locked up, skidding, and he didn't even clip him. He just kind of gave SVG a shot, made him go into that corner harder than what he wanted to, and just sent him into the wall day over. We'll talk about Stuart Haas Racing because as a whole, maybe outside of Noah Gregson, I think they just could not stop hitting barriers. They were just multiple times. You saw either the four, the 14 or the 41 in a barrier some way, shape or form. Actually, especially the four and the 14 car. But soon as that happened, bam, then we really saw everything start to come down for NASCAR Chicago because then we had another frog swallow of a rainstorm just like last year. It was, again, like an encore performance type of thing where it's like, hey, we got rain last year. Let's have some more rain this year. And we had a long rain delay. 
and it really became a timed race. After a very long rain delay, uh, we got back to racing, single file restarts for the rest of the race, and almost immediately, the second favorite to win, Kyle Larson on lap 34, he bends it into turn six, just goes in way too hot, and bam, crashes hard into the tire bears, much more severe than when Kyle Busch hit the bears last year, Larson out of the race. <clears throat> now, with the two leaders out, Who's in play? Who has a shot at winning? Where you look at drivers like Christopher Bell, who was up front. You know, drivers like Ty Gibbs, Todd Gillen, they were up front. Jonathan Nemechek was also up front. But they elected to go to slicks. Just a couple laps before the end of stage two, those drivers, you know, Bell, Nemechek, and those guys, they elected to go to slicks. So they pitted, giving the lead to Joey Hand. Joey Hand, who had wet tires on earlier, as well as Alex Bowman, who was right behind Joey Hand. They had on wets earlier in the race. They stayed out for the end of stage two and they won. And by they, I mean Joey Hand won stage one. Bowman got in second place. And when stage three began, it was the Bowman and Hand show. Who would be better? I thought at first, because Joey Hand, he's the expert, I thought he would go out there and he would just steal the win. Kind of like SVG did last year, just show up and steal the win. But no, it was Alex Bowman who made a power move entering turns four and five, got underneath Joey Hand to take the lead and actually started to drive away. But that doesn't mean he's out of the woods just yet because with all the carnage, all those drivers with slicks on are catching up to him. Chris Bell was up to fifth place after starting in mid-pack, but coming off of turn number three, he got dumped, or I think, yeah, coming off of turn two, turn three, he got dumped by his teammate Martin Trick Jr. after they had a little three wide uh, session where they got together. Truex cut inside, he takes out Bell, Bell out of contention. Out of nowhere, Tyler Reddick shows up, and he, also on slicks, was just eating up Bowman's lead. And by the white flag, because at that point in time, the time limit had reached zero, so we saw, uh, even though there were still, I think, tw what, 22 some odd laps ago, the time limit hit zero, so it was going to be two laps ago. On the final lap, Reddick was on Bowman's tail, about one and a half seconds behind, clearly miles faster, but he... Choked it, let's be honest, he choked it. In turns four and five, he clips the inside wall, then clips the outside wall, and that was all she wrote. Reddick just, he had the opportunity and he fumbled it, allowed Bowman to sail off into the sunset, winning the Chicago street race, snapping an 80 race winless streak, and going to victory, victory lane for, I believe, the eighth time in his career and becoming the 12th different winner of 2024. And now he is locked into the playoffs. Now, after the race, um, <laughs> he had a bit of issues with Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace came up to the side of Bowman and sideswiped him. Um, obvi obviously, of course, Bubba showing his displeasure due to Bowman wrecking Bubba. So again, uh, of course, some people on social media are going to make a big deal out of this. It's not that big of a deal. He got wrecked by Bowman. So of course, he's going to be upset about it. Anyways, not that big of a deal. But it was a huge win for Alex Bowman because, again, no one, I don't think, really had him in their lineup as drivers to win or drivers to have a shot at winning. He's never won on a street course before, never won on a road course before. So to see him go out there win was pretty cool to see and also very shocking to see because it once again flips the playoff picture. Here's a look at the race results. Alex Bowman wins, Tyler Reddick in second, Ty Gibbs third, Joey Hand, who started 38th, finishes in fourth, and Michael McDowell in fifth. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who had multiple crashes, finishes in sixth. Todd Gillen, great run for him in seventh. William Byron, who started at the rear, start, uh, quote, finishes in eighth position. Kyle Busch with a quiet ninth place run, as well as Ryan Blaney. Daniel Suarez in 11th. Daniel Hemrick in 12th. Bubba Wallace, even though he had those issues with Bowman that sent him to the back, somehow was able to finish in the in 13th place. Gregson in 14th. And Austin Sindrick, the top 15. Justin Haley in 16th. Zane Smith in 17th. Brad Kozlowski in 18th. He was up towards the front, but again, he was one of those drivers I elected to pit, I believe. Austin Dillon and Chris Buescher, the top 20. Chase Elliott, 21st. Chastain, Lagana, Josevar, Burton, top 25. Some other notables like Denny Hamlin, who was involved in a crash late in the race. I think it was just one or two laps ago, finishes in 30th. He was in a crash, I believe, with Austin Hill in turn one. Chase Briscoe, who went into the wall multiple times. Truex Jr. in 33rd place when he had that incident with... Um, um, when he had the incident with Christopher Bell, Ryan Priest, 34, John Renemichek in 35th, Josh Berry, 36, Bell, 37th, Almendinger, who also crashed very late in 38th, and the two drivers, this is actually one side kind of funny, the two drivers that we had favorites to win this race, possibly finishing 1-2, 
They end up finishing second to last in last in Kyle Larson and Shane Van Gisbergen. So here's a look at the point standings following Chicago. Now, even with uh, his crash, Larson is still 11 points ahead of Chase Elliott. Uh, Tyler Reddick is third in the season standings, minus 23. But you look at the right side of your screen now. Barntrick Jr. plus 125. Ty Gibbs plus 84. Rosh has same plus 53 within that 60 race gap. But look at the final spot for the cut line. Now, instead of being about a race... Bubba Wallace actually somehow, because he gained so many spots ahead of Chris Buescher, he's actually gained some points on the cut line. He was, I believe, 50-something points back before Can uh, Chicago. Now, he's just 45. Not much gain, but nonetheless, it is still a gain. 45 points, he is below Chris Buescher, who holds the final playoff spot at the moment. Chase Briscoe, minus 88, more than a race behind. Kyle Busch, minus 98. And now Todd Gillen into the top 20, minus 100. And 21. So my thoughts on this race, um, yeah, I think I kind of said a, a lot about it earlier on in the in the episode. I was very annoyed by how this race went. Um, it wasn't good. The racing was good, but the feeling wasn't good. Like there was no flow. There was no you know rhythm. It was just a lot of stop go stop go. Uh, again, it with the rain and the stage cautions and the longevity of the cautions. It's just. It messed the flow. The racing was good. Let me clarify. The racing was good. It's just how it officiated, how it was run, wasn't a fan of at all. If I had to give a rating for this race, I would give it like maybe a six and a half, seven out of ten. Because the racing was good, but just how it was officiated, I did not like it at all. You know, again, longevity for the cautions. The timer, I do feel like is a better alternate than just having, let's say, okay, you know, race is going to end now. You know, I do like the timer. It adds actually, I think in my eyes, it adds, makes the things a little, a little bit more exciting. Um, so I do like the timer more than just NASCAR saying, okay, lap 50, we're going to call it. Um, so I do like that move. But yeah, I think if you watch the race, you could never really get into rhythm. So that's the part. It just doesn't feel right. So uh, yeah, it was the race. It was really good. The strategy was very interesting. You know, NASCAR letting, you know, letting the, uh, the, the teams decide whether to go on wets, whether to go on slicks. So that part was all nice. So again, the actual elementary parts of the race was awesome. I thought it was really good, but how it was officiated, I wasn't a fan of, um, the future of NASCAR in Chicago. Listen, I'm on the boat of the street course over Chicago land. I, as much as I like Chicagoland, there's, there are much more positives in my eyes, much more positives with the street cores than it is with Chicagoland. You know, uh, there's more of a focus on NASCAR when they're in the streets of Chicago. Let's be honest, outside of the NASCAR bubble, nobody gives a damn about uh, NASCAR in Chicagoland. Um, so, again, the, for the future of Chicago, I would love for the race to return next year. Maybe pick a different month at this point. Just just don't race on the 4th of July weekend, maybe. I think that's a sign. Just don't race there on that weekend. Or move the race earlier, something. But there, you know, get rid of stage. I don't know. But there needs to be some type of changes for 2025 on not only the future of NASCAR in Chicago, but I also think the future of street racing. Because I think if NASCAR were to continue with street racing, I don't think any city is going to let them run at nighttime. Uh, so, uh, how, you know. Again, I understand they're working with a very tight window because the concert, NBC, kind of made them pick, okay, 4.30 Eastern time is the time, 5 o'clock when we should race. But that puts you in such a tight window, such a tight window to make sure everything gets done. Because almost immediately, NASCAR said, oh, yeah, by the way, if we can't get the sun, we're letting y'all know. As if they knew that, yeah, we may not get the whole race in. Um so yeah, that, that part was very disappointing because it seemed as though it would be a great weekend. I mean, Saturday was beautiful weather, great Xfinity race. And then the the Sunday morning, you know, early afternoon, great, beautiful weather. As soon as we get the cup race going, bam, encore part two. I mean, it's deja vu all over again. Rain, rain, rain. Um, but yeah, I mean, great drive though by Alex Bowman. Uh, not ex wasn't expecting him to be that strong, especially to go head to head with a, guy, a road course ringer like Joey Hannon and beat him straight up on a street course. That's again, that's not Bowman's specialty. So that was a huge, huge win for him. Uh, congratulations to him and the whole 48 team after what has been a very disappointing past two seasons, especially when you consider everything that Bowman's been through with the back injury, brain injury with a concussion, 
And this year, he's had moments. They have had moments. You know, they've been really under the radar, but they have been nowhere in my eyes, nowhere near the likes of Byron, Elliott, and Larson, uh, where they have at least shown, you know, potential to win. Bowman has shown potential to get, you know, have top 10s, have top 5 speed, They but they've never shown race-winning speed. So it is nice to see them get a win under their belt. But yeah, just to overall wrap it up, I mean, I, I, I think... NASCAR in Chicago, especially the street race. I love the racetrack. The racing's great. Um, the atmosphere just looks great, but um, I don't know. <laughs> it's just the mayor of Chicago was in the NASCAR racing experience fire suit. I don't know. Maybe that could help, but I would, in a perfect world, I would love to have Chicago land come back and also return to the Chicago street course. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It will be very interesting to see what happens uh, in the future of NASCAR Chicago. Surely, I hope that this race forces NASCAR to make some very serious changes in terms of the timing, in terms of like with the stage cautions, because uh, that's really been that's really the main issue. We spend so much time, especially when you have a damn timer, you have a countdown timer. Why do we have stage cautions? Why? Because we're again, we're just wasting time. So hopefully this could force NASCAR to make some type of adjustments for, I think the next road course is Watkins Glen or maybe for 2025, I don't know. But I do think there needs to be a serious change with NASCAR, especially with stage cautions, because honestly, there's no point in having him. We need to get rid of him. But those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts on this race? Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the future of NASCAR in Chicago and the race itself. Did you like it? Did you not? Until next time, my name is Jed from MDK. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.